Thanks for the invitation. So I'm very glad and honored to be here and have the possibility to talk about the, the, the studies we do in Brno. Brno is a strange city. Few people know it. Most of them, they know it for, the, for, for motorbike, MotoGP. So that's, uh, that's also a good point. But, you know, Brno uh, is really a very strange city because being behind the curtain for many years, uh, not many people are aware of the of the famous famous people who were born there. So you have Milan Kundera, everybody knows him. Uh, you have Janacek, the, the composer, mathematicians here, and uh, most most importantly, you have Gregor Mendel, uh, who was actually working in uh, our institution. It was not called the same, but the same hospital, the Santans University Hospital. Uh, for for uh, for a short time, and it's so far the most important fellow we had. Brno is also famous for uh, for something which is very well known in this area, I guess, because of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, Empire, because he hosted uh, in 1805 the Battle of Austerlitz, where Napoleon actually defeated uh, the two kings, the two emperors, uh, and moved on to to Russia. And uh, the city is also mentioned, and this was a surprise to me when I read War and Peace by Lech Tolstoy. It's a city which is mentioned and actually somehow praised in the, in the masterpiece of uh, Tolstoy. Uh, so in this city, which is now uh, around 500,000 people with 13 universities and uh, kind of 90,000 university students, uh, so a very young and active city, lies the the St. Anne's University Hospital, which is a rather old one uh, from 18th century. Uh, and uh, the, the hospital has been, uh, has been attached to the, to the Masaryk University, the local university, uh, since 1919, uh, so from the first uh, uh, Republic of Czechoslovakia. And over the years, uh, it's, been, uh, it's been renewed until 2018, when where the ICRC, the International Center for uh, for um, Clinical Research, uh, was was built and it's running. So this was one of the the, um, the priority Czech priority access financed with the with the structural funds of European Union, and it's I should say uh, the the only clinical research center in the country. Um, it's it's doing rather okay. I should promote it also a little bit, and uh, and, and it's uh, and that's the, the brief history of the of the, the institute itself. So this this clinical research center was basically uh, started in 2011, and now we are in the sustainability sustainability moment where we we, we are forced to complement. The, the funds we get from the government with the, with the private funds or with the European funds. Uh, this is the research portfolio we have. We have clinical research, that's a pretty big part of the institute. We have core facilities, uh, animal center, mass spec, clinical trials. We also have a cannabis research center now. And uh, uh, we have basic research and I'm the group leader of the translational research and I also serve as a, as a vice chair of the institute for a few months now. So the, the institute is composed of uh, uh, roughly 450 employees, uh, number of foreigners. Uh, as I said, we run on grants. So we, we are very happy to provide uh, Czech government with 50% of the, of, uh, of, of the grants they, they, they get us. So it's 50-50 at the moment. We have a number of international collaborations, uh, and I would just highlight that recently we started a collaboration with the uh, ICGB in, um, in South Africa, uh, starting from a Marie Curie ITN grant. So, uh, going to, to science, which is the, the most important part here, uh, I would say uh, my lab is, is basically composed of, uh, of young scientists, uh, uh, from all over the world, I should say, and they mostly deal with interaction between uh, uh, tissue cells and the extracellular matrix, and we, 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 we would like to understand uh, the molecular mechanisms um, underlying the mismatch happening when the extracellular matrix is remodeled during pathologies, during the pathologies of aging, I should say. So you should, 
uh, you, you're pretty much able to, to understand this kind of slide where I show in the heart, which is exposed to the ligation of, a, of the, the descending coronary, how the, the metalloproteinases are activated over time to digest and remodel the extracellular matrix. And when we talk about the remodeling of the extracellular matrix and the negative remodeling in the heart, for example, but this happens in a number of, uh, of uh, pathologies, uh, degenerative pathologies, including those affecting the brain, but also tumors. But in the heart especially, you see that negative effects affect directly the structure, the nanostructure, and the three-dimensional arrangement of the, the, the functional part of the heart, the cardiomyocytes. And so they turn a beautifully organized tissue, like the one you see here, it's a human healthy heart, into a completely deranged mess, which is not functional. So, uh, what we, we tried to do in the last years was to try to, to find, uh, let's say, in the beginning it was a, a numerical matrix of the changes happening uh, at the nanoscale in the extracellular matrix during the pathology. We, we, we have access, uh, we're pretty lucky with that, uh, to, to human samples coming from, uh, from the, the surgery ward, the transplant ward. And so we, we gathered in the last year the, the, the heart transplant unit uh, in the hospital uh, is rather big and, uh, and actually processes kind of uh, 40 to 45 transplants per year, heart transplants per year. And we are looking at uh, dilated cardiomyopathy especially. And what we did, you see here, the, the, the fibrosis, the collagen uh, intertwining uh, the actual fibers in the human heart during the pathology, uh, which is deposited when the, when the matrix is remodeled, and we, we decided to strip out the cells, proceed, uh, proceed with decellularization, and expose these decellularized matrices to, to photon microscopy with a, with a special attention to collagen fibers in a, in a second harmonic generation. So, uh, to make a very long story short, we also did mass spec to confirm the changes in the deposition of the, of the, the matrix, but in these patients which have a reduced ejection fraction, so reduced functionality, you can see that the complexity of the matrix is reduced. In second harmonic generation, you see it pretty much. So this tells you something about the arrangement, the three-dimensional arrangement of the, the, the nanofibers, or collagen nanofibers. We managed to, to model, in collaboration with the University of Calabria, to model uh, in 3D the rearrangement happening in a number of patients. I have to say, this is not an easy task, because the, the heart failure, it's a very diverse pathology, no matter the etiology, and the way uh, the, the matrix is deranged can be extremely different from, uh, from patient to patient. Uh, and this happens also at the, at the genetic level, at the protein level. But anyway, uh, what was more important to us uh, was to show that by using atomic force microscopy, you can pretty much highlight a reduction in the compliance of the, of the decellularized matrix. And so the question to us was, uh, since we are interested in mechanobiology, how are cells uh, uh, exposed to this, uh, to this kind of changes in terms of uh, nanostructure and compliance affected and how, do they pre how they do perceive these changes? So we started with, uh, with a general definition of mechanosensors, uh, which uh, you know, I will leave it here just saying that it's an intracellular molecule able to sense modifications in tissue mechanics and turn it, transform it into a biological response. And we are pretty much interested in uh, yap tas and in the HIPPO pathway, which is quite uh, cool and overcrowded at the moment. But anyway, so uh, to, to sum up the, the, um, the, the HIPPO pathway, we can say it's a, cas it's a cascade of kinases uh, which eventually uh, lead to the dephosphorylation, so it's a negative regulator of uh, dephosphorylation of yap tas which are able to to shuttle to the nucleus and act as co uh, transcriptional co-activators. The interesting part is that the HIPPO pathway itself and the protein, the parallel proteins, the up and TAS, can be mechanically regulated. And this was shown pretty much by Stefano Piccolo uh, and Sirio Dupont 
and um, there's a number of, uh, of mechanical stimuli which can be applied and the system can be used as a non-off relay, which is pretty, pretty obvious to everybody in the lab who, who, who used any of the antibodies which are specific for them. So, uh, what, we, what we contributed to this field, which was pretty much, um, let's say, uh, exploding when we started to work with this, uh, was that the, the I'll show you the besides being mechanically regulated, the proteins can can, on, can also contribute to the mechanics, to the regulation of the mechanics of the cell itself. So I, I will talk about this briefly, but uh, I need to mention that uh, YAP is uh, regulated to yeah. I will talk about YAP because it's uh, like uh, YAP and TAS have rather similar effects, but now that some differences, important differences are are coming out. So we, we're stuck with the app for a very simple reason, antibodies are better. And also, uh, it was more interesting for us in the very beginning. But anyway, YAP and TAS, but they are, they are uh, regulated by cell density, so that they are expressed in the nucleus in sparse cells, but when they are confluent or when the, the cytoskeletal tension is inhibited, they shuttle to the cytoplasm. They can be induced to shuttle to the nucleus by substrate stiffness. Uh, they are sensitive to cell spreading. I'll say a few words on this in the next slides. So you see in very small cells where the cytoskeletal tension cannot be built, YAP is completely cytoplasmic and as the cell can spread and build up the cytoskeletal tension, fibers and tension, YAP hurries up to the nucleus. What's more important is that this kind of mechanical regulation ends up into a transcription regulation itself. So, the, as I said, the, the YAP and TAS can, can translocate to the nucleus following a mechanical stimulus, also a dynamic one, I'll show you. And, uh, and you can monitor directly, either with reporters or you can RNA seek it, and you can see the difference in terms of gene expression induced by this mechanical stimulus. Okay, so that's a clear connection, an on off switch between a mechanical change, which you see in the extracellular matrix, for example and gene expression, so the, foot, the, the fingerprint of the cell. So, uh, these proteins can also be triggered dynamically, which is very important for, uh, at least for uh, bioengineering studies uh, and for, for, uh, for uh, live imaging. And you see what we, we, did it, we did this in Japan with the help of colleagues which, uh, which are expert in materials. Uh, you can actually obtain these cross-linked cross PCL polymers, uh, which can be induced uh, to a to, which can be thermally induced to a transition in the nanopattern. You can stamp it as you want. I mean, you can change this pattern. But the important to us was to, to cause kind of an earthquake under the cell, right? So you, 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 you have your, your, um, your substrate relaxing when you increase slightly the temperature. And you clearly see the protein going out of the nucleus, which was in the nucleus bef before because the substrate was stiff. And then within three hours, 180 minutes, it will go back when the cell is settled again. Okay, and you can, you can also do it uh, by, by stretching the cells themselves. These are IPS derived cardiomyocytes, where you see in red the expression of the app, mm, let's say, more clear, more apparent in the, in the nuclei. And this is obviously associated with changes in uh, gene expression. Also, finally, there was an argument that, that, that uh, the protein the app and also TAS uh, are not exactly mechanosensors because they don't change their conformation directly under a mechanical, uh, mechanical stimulus. And uh, the group of Pereroca demonstrated uh, in a beautiful paper in Cell that by, by actually poking on a cell which is sitting on the substrate on the nucleus, you can induce an, the, the, the opening of the, of the pores, or nuclear pores, so that YAP can actually shut them inside. And that's, that also tells something about the, the, the relationship between uh, the connection of the, uh, the connection between the nucleoskeleton and uh, YAPTAS regulation somehow. And finally, also demonstrated that a single, a single isolated protein of YAP can actually be induced mechanically by AFM cantilever to, to um, let's say, a spring-like activity. So it can be unfolded and folded by force. So that's that, that's what we we actually call a mechanical sensor. Anyway, uh, by, by a number of studies, I will, I will shortly sum them up here, we're able to show 
that that uh, the that sense spreading to raw and rock and the integrity of uh, of um, the cytoskeleton, cell cytoskeleton causes the uh, internalization in the nucleus of the app, which interacts basically with TAD and activates the transcription of focal adhesion genes, so reinforcing the interaction between cell and the and the ECM. So uh, this was kind of a kind of a, um, of a strange result, which was quite well appreciated by the scientific community, um, because the actual understanding until a couple of years ago was that the app was mechanically triggered. The app activity was mechanically triggered, but nobody actually looked at, the, at whether the protein could have a, could, could, could activate mechanosensitive genes, which focal lesions genes are, and thus work on the cell matrix interaction. So we did a number of, uh, of, uh, of uh, chip sex and uh, RNA sex. We, we knocked down, we knocked out by, by CRISPR up in a, in a model of, uh, of uh, breast cancer cells. And we actually proved that when you knock down YAP in these cells, but also in mesenchymal stem cells, you, uh, the cells, they, they actually lose their focal adhesions completely. You can still see vinculin floating around the cell. Um, you see a reduction in the expression of the protein, but the most important part is that the cytoskeleton is untouched, so there's no, there's no effect on the, on the polymerization of the cytoskeleton, but simply the cytoskeleton cannot pull on the focal adhesions and build up the tension. So uh, what we, we showed recently by using a, a, a FRET vinculin-based FRET sensor of tension, which is based on the exchange of, uh, of uh, fluorescence from these two fluorophores, which can be very close, and so they, they exchange the, 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 the energy, or they can be, when the molecule is stretched far, so the energy is reduced, the, the energy transfer is, is reduced, we showed that actually the depletion of the app reduces the, the tension transmitted on the focal additions which means not only you have uh, less focal additions formed or no focal addition formed, but when you resupplement with vinculin, when you resupplement with vinculin, uh, the tension that the, this vinculin is able to feel is reduced. So uh, this, this was complemented by functional experiments showing that uh, uh, when you have uh, <coughs> the, uh, either the depletion of the app or the overexpression of the protein itself, in a collagen, in a 3D collagen pad contraction assay, the cells are able to differentially contract the extracellular matrix. And finally, uh, the, for, for this reason, because they're not able to pull on the extracellular matrix, so they're not able to build tension over the cytoskeleton, cells without the app, they fail to acquire proper shape. They have these characteristic actin blebs, and they are soft. You can, uh, you can basically uh, use AFM to do, to do tapping mode analysis of the elasticity of the, of the cells, and you have a, a pretty much a loss of, of uh, compliance, which can be, which can be reconstituted by uh, integrin dimers. So uh, the model we came up with is the model of the tent, very similar. You have pins, which are the focal adhesions, and you have the the building block of the bars, the, the building bars, uh, which, which is the cytoskeleton. When one of the two is missing, in this case, the focal adhesions are depleted, the cell just collapses. So if you, if you think about a, uh, a tent itself, if you pull on a tent which is complete, with the pins which are able to, to stand, so you'll have a resistance, which is the stiffness you, or the elasticity you measure, let's say. When this is not happening, the cell just the tent just collapses, and you cannot measure anything. Basically, so, and uh, and that's the this is the model with cytoskeleton focal additions. We came up. So we came up with. So how is this important and relevant to cell function? We did this uh, this uh, interesting experiment in Japan by using a, a photoactivated polymer in which the whole area is cytophobic. Only these 30 micron diameter islands are, are cytophilic, so the cells can only grow there. And we can, uh, by UV radiation, 
remove the, cytop the cytophobic film so that the cells are triggered to migrate. And we did it with, uh, with cells in which we, we depleted the app to show whether this, uh, this uh, activity in, uh, in uh, controlling focal adhesion, focal adhesion formation is important. So these are normal cells migrating out. The time scale is the same. I'm sorry, it's not there. But anyway, you see how the cells are there. And when you do the same with the cells lacking the app, you can look at this cell, for example, or this cell. You see that the migration is very is very is impaired and you can uh, you can also uh, exploit this um, uh, ECM invas invasion assays to study how and if the app is involved in this you can study it in 2D and in 3D and pretty much still with this uh, with this breast cancer tumor, tumor cell lines you see yourself that that the cells are not able to penetrate the extracellular matrix when they lack the app so uh, when we were doing these experiments, we also realized that uh, within the annotation, uh, the annotation we, we usually do what we call the bona fide targets of the app. We do RNA sec and chip sec to see which are the actual the targets which are actually bound by the app physically on the DNA and are activated. Here it's a chip sec instead, and we demonstrated that there's a, a clear annotation for extracellular matrix and for extracellular matrix remodeling in the app, which is something different, right? So this is going outside of the cells. We confirmed this in, uh, in RNA-seq on, uh, on a line over expressing, on a mesenchymal stem cell line over expressing the app, and we found that this annotation for cell adhesion was followed by, which we knew already from the previous study, uh, was followed by extracellular matrix organization, which was something new for us. So we proved pretty much that uh, the depletion of the app or the overexpression impair the, the, the um, production of key ECM proteins uh, and this is more evident in the cellularized matrices so the deposition also is impaired so we we actually asked uh, whether this activity of the app this extracellular matrix activity would actually play back on the cells which are sitting on, ma on the matrix which is produced by cells with more or less uh, YAP and um, then we, we designed a very simple experiment in which uh, we produced the cellularized matrices uh, from cells having, diff um, having different YAP activities, distinct YAP activities. And we, we seeded on these matrices uh, cells without YAP because we wanted to see the pure effect of the, of the matrix on the, on the cells in the absence of YAP. So uh, you see here. Uh, this is pretty much confirmed. The, the stiffness of, of cells without the app is much lower than the control. And, and what we found by surprise is that when we grow these YAP knockout cells on a matrix uh, produced by cells with a regular uh, quantity of YAP, there's a slight increase in the stiffness. So in the ability of the cell, in the absence of focal additions, to build a tension. And uh, more importantly, when we use matrices which, uh, which are either composed by CTGF, which is the main target of the app, or by, by cells uh, overexpressing the app, the increase is, uh, is much higher. So this means that something is happening, is being triggered, some mechanical response is being triggered by, by the app independently of its transcriptional activity, which is the paradigm which has been used in the uh, which has been used uh, in, the, in the last years. So we, we, we immediately looked at TAS, because TAS was unaffected in the, in the CRISPR lines we are using, and we detected no increase in, the, in TAS DAD uh, transcription activity. And also we looked at RAW, which is upstream of, uh, of the app, um, as I showed you in the, in the cartoon before, and demonstrated pretty much that in the absence of the app, Rho doesn't play a role, it's not able to trigger the, the, the stiffening of the cells. So, uh, this is not over yet, but uh, basically we, what we did, we, we, we went for an RNA-seq, identified few, few, um, few targets or few candidates we are, we are uh, screening now, and uh, more importantly, what we, what we noticed in this, uh, uh, in this experiment was that uh, the so growing Cells, cell, uh, cells depleted for YAP on a matrix produced by, by cells expressing more YAP 
slightly increase the cell area, which was which is significantly reduced uh, because the cells can simply not stretch, so they just collapse. So this is apparent area. And more importantly, the size of the nuclei was bigger. So this was pretty new for us because it would uh, this would tell us something about the connection between YAP and the nucleoskeleton, which is completely unknown at the moment. But if you look at the nuclei of uh, of uh, YAP depleted cells, and you compare it to the, to the same cells grown on an extracellular, on, an, on the cellularized matrix, uh, obtained by YAP overexpressing cells, this really makes a difference. <coughs> and uh, this is important. Why? Because this calls uh, for a, what we what we named a mechanoparacrine effect, which is on YAP of cells, like in a system like the heart, in a system like the heart, the only cells expressing, heart, expressing YAP are the cardiac fibroblast and, uh, and, and the endothelial cells. The cardiomyocytes are completely negative. So the cardiac fibroblasts are obviously the cells remodeling the extracellular matrix. And it, this could be done partially by, through YAP, because we know TGF-beta is involved. We know a lot of factors are involved in the remodeling. But how is this mechanically impairing, or let's say affecting, generally speaking, uh, cardiomyocyte function? This is of interest for us. Also because uh, during myocardial infarction, or after myocardial infarction, the cardiomyocytes and the fibroblasts sitting at the, at the infarction border, border zone, they reactivate YAP. And uh, they, they do it, they reactivate it in the nucleus, uh, and if you look at, uh, at what we did here, we compared our bona fide targets of YAP in RNA-seq, in uh, CHIP-seq, with a, with a mouse-infarcted heart, you can pretty much identify a number of, uh, of targets of YAP which are upregulated during, after the myocardial infarction. So something is happening there. We're still, we're still going for a... And what, what we, we... In the, in the first, uh, in the first uh, paper which we we recently submitted, we showed that actually the, the reactivation of YAP in the cardiac fibroblast is able to, to remodel the matrix uh, and, uh, by, by, in, by, by myofibroblast differentiation, by increasing the, the focal adhesion force on the fibers themselves. And this would account for the reduction in the complexity because the fibers are pulled together, and this is the change we, we probably see there. And this will affect, in turn, the function of, uh, of the, cardi the, the, um, the cardiomyocytes, which survive the, um, the ischemic event. And OK, you'll see here the contraction, but anyway, I will not sit on this. So the other, important, the other reason why, why mechanobiology and YAP are important in um, going a little slow is because uh, YAP is also an oncogene. And so you can uh, eventually try to connect uh, mechanical forces to, 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 to cancer directly. And that's quite a stretch, right? So this is something um, that you can probably guess, but it's, let's say, beyond our imagination now, I mean, so to directly connect this. But you, you see that in the liver, for example, where, where YAP is needed for the, for the development, an overexpression of YAP uh, causes hepatomegaly. If this overexpression is transient, you have a reversion complete. But if it's persistent, you end up with hepatocellular carcinoma. So by keeping this in mind, and also keeping in mind that, uh, uh, as I showed you before, uh, YAP can be, YAP expression and function and transcription activity can be controlled by, by patterning the cell, by constraining the cell. So you can have two different uh, situations, and this is in the <coughs> most stem cells. Where you, where you have like big cells with active YAP in the nucleus, they become preferentially osteoblast, and that's, that's uh, pretty well known. While constrained cells with, uh, with uh, YAP outside of the nucleus, they prefer to, to go the adipocyte way. So there was a paper coming out lately, I for, you know, well, the, the reference is not complete, but anyway, sh um, ca um, coming out lately uh, proposing this new uh, this, this new paradigm for, uh, for cancer treatment uh, which, which deals with the conversion of the, of, the, of the cancer to mesenchymal cells which can be turned 
into harmless fat cells. That's a, I mean, it's, a, uh, it's extremely dangerous because the EMT is the process which leads the, the metastatization of cells. But we thought, what if, uh, so we know that the app impairs adipogenesis. We also know YAP is involved in uh, EMT because it's an oncogene. So what if we try to mechanically control YAP in a tumor cell line here, uh, still these uh, breast cancer cells, and you can see by 3D hydrogels you can basically have uh, active YAP transcription here in, uh, in a soft hydrogel where the cell can spread, while you can prevent the expression by, by using stiff, uh, stiff hydrogels. And this correlates pretty much with the adipogenesis in mesenchymal stem cells. And you can, uh, you can uh, actually say to the N3D work opposite in this case, because you, you, need, to, you need to think about uh, um, the condition which favors cell stretching, so cell spreading favors the up activity. So what happens in 2D is that cells will only spread on a stiff matrix, so they will activate the up. In 3D, cells were only spread within a soft matrix. And this controls adipogenesis otherwise. So <coughs> if we control it, if we do it with, uh, with the breast cancer cells, what happens? So we know YAP blocks adipogenesis. Uh, that's what we want to do, no? EMT, and then when they are mesenchymal-like, we will induce adipogenesis. As I said, very dangerous, but still. So, we proved that the depletion of YAP favors in this uh, epithelial carcinoma uh, the expression of a uh, few uh, EMP so mesenchymal markers, and we actually proved that when we induce adipogenesis, uh, YAP is not there, we are able to get adipocytes and which stop proliferating. So we tried to do it mechanically still with the, with the reporter line for YAP TAP transcription activity, and you see yourself on a soft matrix, so within a soft 3D matrix, you have uh, the expression of the app. You can bring it down by stiffening the matrix, and uh, you can pretty much induce adipogenesis on the, on the soft matrix when, uh, when the app is repressed this way. So we're trying to, to apply this uh, very simple and naive concept now to, to human, uh, to patient-derived prostate cancer spheroids or organoids, or whatever. Uh, I'm not sure it's going to work, but anyway, so that's uh, beyond my, my possibility to, to, to guess it now. So uh, I'll go a little faster here. Um, what we also do, there, was a, there, were, there were a number of reports uh, over the last uh, 10 years uh, showing that uh, uh, YAP was important for, uh, for uh, pluripotent stem cells, for pluripotency, for reprogramming. It was a barrier or um, it would help the differentiation of this and that in uh, pluripotent stem cells. And we, 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 had, uh, we tried to, to, to find our way in this. We showed that in uh, pluripotent stem cells, YAP TAD transcription activity can indeed be, act be mechanically activated, uh, although it doesn't, doesn't seem sensitive to cell, cell interaction. But anyway, it can be mechanically activated by stiffness. And, uh, and that the stiffening of the cell, which follows, it only follows in, the, in, the physio in a physiological range of substrate stiffness. Then the cell is probably not able to cope with the, with this, uh, with the stiffness of the substrate, and it basically, it's basically reduced. You have here TCPS, and the cell is basically softer than on a soft material. Anyway, what we also found, which was a surprise to us, uh, is that the, the, the stiffening of the cell is not completely on YAP. So what you see here in pluripotent stem cells is that it is true cells without YAP are in fact softer than the, the control, but they can still slightly respond to the stiffening of the matrix. So this means something else is at place, something else is at work in these uh, in this cells, which is completely different from uh, from uh, adult cells. So still, we are able to show that, uh, that in embryonic stem cells, uh, uh, the, the elastic modulus which measures the stiffness of the cells uh, is reduced when YAP is not, is not there. And when you overexpress it in the presence of TAD, you significantly increase uh, the stiffness, the mechanics of the cell. So you increase also the contractility, so, as I showed you before. And we, we proved by, by Chipsec that, uh, that the, the factor is actually active 
go, it goes to the nucleus and binds to DNA, and the, the notation we find uh, is still cell adhesion, cell cell signaling, which we also see in adult cells, but surprisingly, this does not affect pluripotency at all. At all, completely. So, uh, you see it here with a number of, uh, of different, uh, of different um, protocols, uh, mechanically induced, overexpression, stable overexpression, mild overexpression. Nothing changes in the pluripotency. And also, when, uh, when we look at different stif substrate stiffness, uh, stiffnesses, which, as I showed you before, differentially activate the protein uh, in the nucleus of these pluripotent cells, uh, uh, you'll see that there's a mild, there's a mild change in the expression of uh, pluripotency <coughs> markers, but all in all, the stiffness is not able to change the, the pluripotency of these cells. And more importantly, this is what, 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 I, what I find surprising, is that no matter the protein is active in the nucleus, can be even more active when you, when you, when you stiffen the substrate, the number of genes which are changing is extremely low. We're talking about 30 genes overall, which is a complete failure. So uh, we, we, don't know, <laughs> we don't know why, but the, the, let's say the efficiency of the, of the mechanosensing in pluripotent stem cells is zero. I have to say, when starts beginning to differentiate, the mechanosensing kicks in. So I will not stick to this, but anyway, uh, I'll show you that when you induce mesoderm differentiation, cells without the app, they, they produce mesodermal progenitors. So the, there's a bipotent progenitor, for example, in the heart, the cardiac mesoderm, which can do, can do uh, endothelium and cardiac uh, and, and contractile cells. And uh, we, we show that the app is impairing this, this process here, mechanically impairing this process, uh, so that the cardiogenic, uh, when, you, when you take it out, the cardiogenic mesoderm is, um, is basically accumulating, and both endothelial and cardiac cells are produced more efficiently. Although there must be something down the line which controls then the maturation of these cells. And so we, we came up with, the, with, the, with this uh, idea that although the mechanosensing of, uh, ah, this, okay, this is a bit mismatch. Although the mechanosensing of uh, pluripotent stem cells uh, uh, is, uh, let's say, is shielded against mechanical stress. So it's not efficient, it's not functional. It's all biology, it's all biological factors there. There's still a role of the protein in, uh, in giving a mechanical imprinting of the cells whenever they are going one way or another during the, the specification and the differentiation. And with this, I think, um, Already, already over the, the time, uh, so I hope I was not too, too boring. I would like to, to conclude by advertising PhD positions in, uh, in this Marie Curie project, uh, which we got together with, uh, with the University of Maastricht, with Lorenzo Moroni, with uh, Marco Rasponi from the Politecnico Milano, University of Basel, with Ivan Martin, uh, Ente Ospedale Cantonale in Lugano, and also the Hochschule in Aachen. And we'll be looking for, uh, for uh, talented PhD students who, who, who like to travel, who like to take the challenge working at the interface between, uh, between molecular biology and bioengineering. And that's all. I'll thank my, my, my collaborators and you for the attention. Happy to, to take any questions. <laughs>